Good evening, everyone, once again, and um, we are so excited to have you all a part of this webinar this evening. And um, it's been an it's been an interesting time for everybody, uh, for us as individual, for the country as a whole, and also globally. And um, everyone has, is beginning to have to adjust to a new normal. And um, there have been speculations here and there as what the next phases of our lives will be like. And uh, it is act also on, the, on this premise, we are also um, trying um, our bits and exchange to see how we can um, ensure that what we have to offer as benefits would be felt by everybody, all the stakeholders involved. And um, I'd like to say by, I'd like to start by saying that um, one of the things that this new normal has taught everybody is the, particularly for service provider, is that everyone is having to create and create new ways of adding value to whatever service they are currently offering to their customers. So everyone is going beyond the traditional um, services that they currently to seeing, okay, what additional thing can I bring on board to exactly every client is also beginning to place demand on their service provider in order to get the maximum return. And so based on that, we would actually be exploring what commodities uh, has to offer us as capital market operators. And um, my colleague is going to do a, a, a deep dive presentation. But one, of the thing I, one thing I want to uh, say before we go into it is that um, commodities as commodities trading or commodities markets as a whole is an integral part of any economy that is going to make impact um, at large. And Nigeria as, as an entity has um, some interesting activity in the last decade around um, IT commodities specifically. Is the product we're bringing to you to say this? Are, there's a huge opportunity. How can you leverage? What? How can you leverage on this opportunity? Not just to drive um, um, services for yourself, but to also increase your customer satisfaction and to give them um, with increased return on their investment. Um, I think um, Kule will take the next 20 to 30 minutes to present what we have for today, and thereafter we can have our questions. Please feel free to raise your hand if you have any comments or uh, have a question, or you could just type it in the message part of the, of the app. Thank you. Kunle, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Funta. Um, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, I'll just take the deep dive into commodities. The whole idea of coming into this is to show how we can unlock alternative investment for capital market players in Nigeria, especially within this time that is actually begging for it as we speak. So commodities, my presentation will go in two outlines. We start with discussing commodities on the broad view, and I discuss what effects role plays in the commodities ecosystem. Okay, so commodities itself are fungible raw materials, and they are very, very integral within the within four or five industrial um, sectors of economies. You can look at it in the likes of crude oil, agriculture, energy, and precious metals as well. So for commodities, I, I would like to explain that they are very, very, they are a good way to diversify your portfolios beyond equities and fixed income securities. One of the things that is very, very, very paramount about the commodities market is that it actually goes in the opposite direction of stocks, especially because when there is inflation, when inflation increases, commodities tend to rise. The price of commodities tend to rise, which shows that there's an opportunity for people that have actually diversified their portfolio within that area. They can actually get capital appreciation. So I'll just go into what commodity, apart beyond that, and just see how it is a lifeblood for global economy itself. So commodities, as we said, it represents a live lot of global trade. So if you look at um, global economy or different countries as we speak, in one way or the other, they are dependent on commodities. You look at Nigeria, you look at um, America or different across all global countries, they are dependent on commodities. This pictorial representation shows us that 
for both imports and exports. You can see um, European and Middle Eastern countries exporting and importing in excess of $4 billion worth of commodities as of last year. This is according to research that we did um, that we did from World Trade Organization. This also shows how integral it is. If you look at Africa as well, Africa is within um, less than one billion dollars. Um, this is this can be due to specific shortfall in terms of investments in those areas. But you know that it's actually integral to them. The supply chains across the world depends on commodities of on availability of commodities within the primary and secondary production. So when we look at agriculture, for example, so from African countries, a lot of them export commodities to European countries or South American countries as well, export these commodities to European countries. So you can imagine how dependent it is and whereby those other countries exploit, those, they exploit and process these commodities to um, food. So commodities go beyond just um, sustaining, it goes into sustaining the economy in terms of poverty and financial inclusion as a whole. So uh, it's a major lifeblood of um, global trade. So that's why we have this, um, based on this research, also says 102 countries have 60%, over 60% deposit and um, dependence on commodities for their economic growth. If I even, not to take it too far away, we look at Nigeria itself or other African countries that are dependent on oil, crude oil. So you can say maybe they have the resource costs in that area. But also, there are other commodities areas right there but that they are not looking at as well. So it, I'll take this back home in Nigeria. The commodities back here represents an investable asset with industrial use, like I said earlier. Um, the minimum contribution of commodity to the Nigeria economy is 28%. That's agricultural sector itself contribute at least 28 percent to the nigerian economy and it's worth it to note that within this sector there is little or no investment compared to what um we, how much more we put on crude oil in the crude oil space in energy sector so you can imagine if much more investment is done within this space that's um agriculture it will reduce our dependency on crude oil to some extent um like i said commodity represents an average of 82% of total exports. So Nigeria is the set, I have a research that says Nigeria is the second um, highest exporter globally of ginger as of last year. And this is also within the agricultural sector. And if you look at this 82%, we know that much more, a huge portion of it is in crude oil, which is what we have mainly focused on. And as we can see right now, this is a good time to diversify our interests and this is also one of the things that is, this is why it's necessary for people to diversify their portfolio as well within this um, commodity space beyond crude oil and go into agriculture. And I'll just show a bit as our presentation goes further. So the total commodity export value is 18%, average 18% of GDP over the past four years. And it's no news that crude oil remains the most important um, commodity that we focus on in Nigeria. Okay, so not just to discuss within the commodities um, landscape as a whole, I'll just take a look at the agricultural landscape just to give us um, a bit of overview of how the markets and the activities play within this land um, sector, within the agricultural commodities sector. We look at the pre-trade and the, to the primary market, the secondary market and the post-trade. So the pre-trade and the post-trade are pretty much the back end of this agricultural commodities landscape while the primary market and the secondary market are a bit more of front facing. So we are looking at the elements and the roles and primary users across these activities. For the pre-trade, we are looking at production and grading. So one of the fundamentals of the commodity market is the quality because it's only standardized. So the quality of these commodities has to be very, very well established because for you to trade a market, you need to guarantee that quality is good. So in the pre-trade area, we are looking at the elements of production and grading. Those grading is to ensure that this quality is up to the standard um, level or acceptable level. Then if you look at the primary market, so the primary market is pretty much front facing, like I said, that the OTC is more of the physical market where these commodities are traded, which is mainly what we do in Nigeria at the moment. So you see people go to the market, they trade in um, grains, you go to, the, they have specific market, they, 
the trading cocoa and all other commodities like that. Then the forwards as well is done within this um, physical primary market as well. Then we talk about spots and futures, which is a bit more advanced in terms of um, forward um, standardizing agreements for commodities traders. So these are some of the key elements. So like I said, the post trade is a bit backward. So if you are dealing with commodities, one of the important things are uh, storage. If we can see what is going on in the um, US market in terms of commodities, um, WTI, one of the major problem right now is storage because there is too much demand and people will have to actually take delivery of those futures contracts that they've taken. And most people are trading in commodities without doing they're not planning on taking delivery. So storage is a major part of the commodities market and the CCP, which are much more back office, back end um, functions. We're looking at the role within this pre-trade area is quality assurance and grading. The main role is there is for quality assurance. The primary market is price discovery because there's price market interaction within the physical market. So the secondary market, the main role there is for liquidity and to edge against prices. So when you see um, the spots and the futures market, the idea there with the role of those um, participants within that area is to edge against price movement. Um, and the post trade, you're talking about securitization. So which is pretty much the, the role of the depositories as well. The depositories, when these transactions have been done within the front face in the, um, the physical market, the secondary market, Markets, the securitization is quite paramount. So, in a way, every activity within this space is quite important. So, the primary users of the within the pre trade are the producers and the traders, because I said this is the beginning. So, the primary users are the producers, the aggregators as well. Um, the primary markets for the primary users, you see the processors. You for the secondary markets, you have capital market players like like the companies you represent. Um, you have investors and you have speculators that. Are, looking at taking con um, advantage of price movements. The post trade, um, I've only said this is back end. So you have depository performing, um, or you have the exchange performing, standardizing agreements in this place, like we said, for securitization of these commodities. So if we're looking at all these activities, their intermediary, comp their intermediary um, counterparts, that perform these roles as well. So for the in the pre-trade, for in, within the agricultural commodities landscape, you see the agri service providers. So those guys, um, you see the aggregators. For the primary markets, you have people that are in charge of knowledge and shipping because this is more. financing to encourage productivity in the space of before the trade starts in agricultural commodity. We are looking at the aggregation because like we said earlier, we are talking about aggregators play in this space. We are talking about the grading and primary processing. So for the primary markets, we, are, we said already it's a physical market. So we're looking at trading activities. We're looking at fright and forward, fright and forwarding. We're looking at depths arrangement of debt structures that can come as forward contracts, which we refer to earlier. So for secondary, what are the main products and services? There yeah, you see um, investment banks pushing trades and spots. You see um, wealth management companies offering different services as well as investment advisories. We've discussed about what the post trade is done, what is done within the post trade, which is the settlement and collateral management services and centralized securities depository services as well. So looking at those products and services, we are saying that these products and services have typical instruments in the typical commodities exchange. So some of the typical instruments traded are you have the commodity index, you will, uh, in which the, in the commodities exchange, commodities ecosystem, they call them, some of them ETCs, which are most likely like the mutual funds or the exchange traded funds that 
are modeled in the equities market. You have the futures, you have spot trade, you have options, and you have swaps. So um, looking at this, a stand, um, we've identified a standardized commodities ecosystem. So what is FX role? FX role is also identifying that there is an opportunity for growth within the commodities ecosystem. But before that has to be done, we need to standardize and ensure that the infrastructure that will enable those, that ecosystem tribe, we need to put it in place. So FX has been around for the past six years, trying to put that infrastructure, trying to put that um, system that will ensure a commodities ecosystem in Nigeria to try to bring together to put that in place. And if you look at the agricultural commodities, like I said, based on what agriculture contributes to the economy, we said 28%, which is in a place where there is little or no investment. These are some of the things that um, encourages effects or motivates effects to come into the market and help for to improve contribution from the financial market players, contribution from the retail investors to improve investments within this sector. So what are we doing as FX Commodities Exchange? So FX Commodities Exchange is um, a private commodities exchange that was established, like I said, six years ago to create a market whereby we securitize agricultural products. So we're starting with agricultural products at the moment because it's easier for us to enable that education within the Nigerian um, market. So over time, we are looking at going into other commodities. But for now, we're starting with agriculture because it's also easy for people to relate to it as well. And it's quite, they can easily understand that space as quick as possible. So over the past um, six years, we have operated in 15 states with 45 warehouses. So one of the things we said earlier amongst those agricultural activities, we said the warehousing, the storage is key. So for FX to be able to do that, to know that, to create that um, viable commodities ecosystem, commodities market, we identify that warehouse and storage is key to guarantee the quality of commodities that can be traded on the exchange. So we have 15, we are present in 15 states at 45 warehouses. We've done trades in excess of 135,000 metric tons within the physical markets. To guarantee the supply of commodities within this space as well, we've been able to partner with um, the farmers. The farmers in excess of 200,000, we've partner with them by providing them financial inclusion to ensure that they have a financial footprint, which is also part of the activities that are done within the pre-trade um, stage of the commodities landscape. So we've done that and we ensure that those farmers that we register on our platform as well, they have their farms geomapped. So these are not virtual farms. So we identify that to come into this commodities, agricultural commodities market, we focus at the moment on grains and oil seeds. So the focus crops are maize, soybean, paddy rice, sorghum, and cocoa. And this is because these are commodities that are easily preserved. So if you ask us what the play is in the agricultural market is, we'll tell you that it's farmers engagement and profiling to provide them footprints in the financial market to provide them financial footprints in terms of um, financial inclusion, to give them access to the markets whereby they will be able to sell their commodities as well as get financing for their, um, for their, in, for their yields, for their productivity that's going to improve, improve productivity. So one of the things that plagues the agricultural sector is the little or no investment by different stakeholders that should be investing in this sector. So that is one area that FX is playing to give access to the farmers in terms of finance and give them a market where their commodities will be traded. So we also provide storage and collateral management, like we said. So one of the things that we've said to specific tools that will be able to help us improve market confidence, which is where we say we rely on big data and analytics to be able to provide an efficient market system.
So without this, we've been able to look at the Nigerian commodities market and identify that, okay, for the past six years, so we're looking to partner with the capital market to help them diversify their portfolio beyond the regular bread and butter investment that they do. Uh, we have identified some of these commodities and at the back of which we've built financial instrument products. So we're looking at the spots market. If you look at spots products, it's a securitized version of the physical market in which investors, both financial partners or retail investors can come in and buy unitized portion of rice, unitized portion of sodom, unitized portion of lace, and look to diversify their investment portfolio or for capital appreciation. So these commodities traded within the sports markets are backed by actual goods or commodities within the warehouses that we've said. And so one of the things that we looked at in this is that the quality of those commodities is assured for us as an exchange. And when this trade is consummated, um, the investor is given an electronic warehouse receipt as an evidence of their contract. So this is just like the version of the share certificate in the equities market. We identified forwards which have um, deliverable, actionable forwards that in which the manufacturers and the farmer can come into an agreement to deliver X amount of commodities at Y dates in future. So for this, we've built it as a financial instrument that can help um, capital markets players play within the time lag whereby this production will be done by the supplier who are the farmers. So the capital market player can come to finance this opportunity for the manufacturing companies. We have the interest notes as well. The interest note are debt issuances. Basically, they are, it's a financing opportunity to unlock capital for the farmers. So in this point, you are looking at improving productivity. So the productivity that is improved is supposed to guarantee food security in the country. So in this area, the financial market players or capital market players can look at funding these farmers directly. And the funding will not come in terms of direct cash to them. It will come in terms of inputs. Inputs like the fertilizer, the improved seedlings or crop um, protective items that will improve their productivity. Um, we also have the asset back commercial papers. These are typical commercial papers, but they are unlike the commercial papers that we know, these are backed by commodities that are placed in the warehouse. So for FX, we are coming in as collateral managers that are going to issue in warehouse receipts to capital, to an issuing house. So the issuing house goes to the market to issue com commercial papers for this to help fund the funding need of manufacturers or processors. So we also have the exchange traded commodities. So we identified that most of the people we are speaking to who are the financial market players, we know that you, most of you have um, ETFs. So these are typical commodity versions of ETFs, whereby um, you can have a basket of commodities where the price of each of the, the price of those commodities are tra um, trailing the features of others. So for us as, a, as FX, what we are doing is to bridge the gap within the commodities ecosystem that we've guaranteed liquidity and guaranteed supply within that space and help capital market players within the financial ecosystem to have diversified portfolios, to have alternatives of investment. So we're looking at derivatives, we're looking at um, futures and investments, forward swaps, but we have them, be, we have those products built at the back of commodities. So basically that's the area where we're looking at. So it's supposed to be a collaborative effort with us where we effects are going to act as an exchange to ensure that um, both counterparties in this case are interests are covered. So for us, what we've done, uh, we've leveraged on technology, like, we've, like we said, we leverage on big data and analytics. So we've been able to build a front facing platform whereby these capital market players that can come on board and we're looking at you guys to come on board to come and trade commodities on the sports market. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you're looking at price discovery. You're looking at exposing your clients to alternative investment options 
so that they can have capital appreciation as well as um, diversifying their portfolio. So we have a platform called Comex. It's currently available on Apple Play, Apple iStore and the Google Play Store. So, and the whole idea is to ensure that there's e easy and affordable commodities trading. So it's an all-inclusive platform whereby we are also looking at training investors, looking at ensuring that investors diversify their portfolios and and especially times like this, when we say that uh, when inflation is when inflation is increasing, like I said, we expect commodities price to increase. So when we are encouraging um, investors, such as financial partners or retail investors, we are looking at them to come on board. And this is quite robust. So it's still up to what the capital market players play with within the um, equities ecosystem. But just knowing that you are playing with the commodities differently now. So who are the participants to a typical on ComEx for on the platform? We have the brokers, we have the broker dealers, we have the promoters. So the brokers are typical brokers that have the license to trade on behalf of an investors. The same way you have brokers on the NSC, so you have the license by the um, by SEC to trade on behalf of investors. Yes, you can come on board on ComEx and trade. You have broker dealer whereby you can put um, give brokerage services, but in this case, you can also trade in proprietary capacity for the organization, for the cap for your company, as well as trade on behalf of the investor. So we also have the promoters because we identify that um, there's need to encourage to give to create a community of investors that will trade on the platform. So we are looking at the promoters, which we can also call. Um, a, so, a version of the sub brokers on the equities market. Um, these promoters are just there to give investors education about the product of commodities, but unfortunately, they will not be able to trade on behalf of the investors. So they will be able to route their trade through a broker. So if you ask me, how do you come on board? So it's easy. You sign up on, on web or via your phone for individual investors. But for the capital market players, we've been able to um, provide this robust platform where you can sign up on web and you register as an investor first before you register, um, upgrade your account, providing all the KYC requirements as a broker or a broker dealer. So these are the typical KYC requirements for brokers or broker dealers. Um, we need your capital, um, the company information that's the LC number, your website, the address. We need the certificate of incorporation, the particulars of directors, the board resolution, confirming that there's an agreement, there's a resolution from the board to come on board on the platform. And we will as well need list of authorized security, um, authorized representatives that will be able to um, perform these activities of trading on the platform, as well as the memorandum of association, confirming the extent of which your um, registration of business can do on the platform. So typically, we are saying that if you can fulfill the um, typical KYC requirements of the NSC, you most likely can fulfill the KYC requirements of our home platform. At the moment, it's good to say that at the moment, registration on the platform is free because our whole goal is to create this collaborative environment whereby we are looking at unlocking alternative investments to the capital market players as well as the retail investment investors as large. So thank you for the second questions and feedbacks. Thank you very much, Kune. That was an awesome presentation. So I guess with, um, some of the questions have been dropped. Um, we we'll okay. just so um someone is saying can we share the presentation to our email? I, yes, okay. we will we'll do that at the end of this, um, at the end of the, at the end of the webinar. Then the, there's another question: How do you deal with issue of data from farmers and 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 integrated on the system? So, um, in terms of um, farmer data aggregation, we actually have a system that we've built in place um, that handles the. Um, data collection of farmers from when we first contact them to onboarding them and then to profiling them and ensuring that they have um, 
um, financial footprint vis-a-vis -vis creating bank details and BVN for them. We, um, at, at the level of the farmers, we have a structure called um, outreach officers. So these outreach officers deal um, with the farm. They are, they are what you would call the equivalent of an account officer. And um, I, I think one of the things I think, um, I'm, I'm not sure Kunde mentioned was that when we deal with our farmers, we deal with them in clusters of co cooperatives. So these farmers belong to a group of cooperatives and each cooperative have um, outreach officers that are assigned to them. So it's the outreach officer that handle um, the information gathering and onboarding of the farmers. And then we have our own um, internal system called the workbench where all of this information are also integrated as well. Um, so I want to say, can I sign up as an individual on COMEX and trade? Sure, you can sign up um, as an individual and trade on COMEX. Just download the app, um, register as an investor, and then um, you are up and running. Fund your account. It's important you fund your account, otherwise you won't be able to buy anything. Um, then you can start trading. And if you also want to then upgrade to being a promoter, just as Kunde explained, promoter, uh, manages community of other people who are in, who are also interested in trading. You can also do that. Then, uh, if an investor has ten million, it's easy to buy shares through your broker at the stock market. Same with funding. Okay, is that a question? I'm not. I think that's a comment. I have two questions. I want. Um, okay. Okay, so I, I'm going to go up. Please keep the question coming. So someone said, how do investors in impute notes, for instance, expect to get returns? So the, the process for investing in impute notes um, is there's, there's a prospectus that gets shared. And then one, um, in the prospectus, there's a commercial agreement detailing the terms of, of, of um, that issuance. You then sign, you, you indicate what, how much you want to invest and you sign. And um, it's a 270 days um, instrument and usually held till maturity. So you get your return at the end of two days and 270 days. And it's a discounted instrument as well. Um, what's the average return and traded volume on the exchange? When you talk of an average returns on, um, so now, if you, that's, I, I believe you're speaking about the spot trading. Um, just like your equity, it's about price movement. It depends on when you come into the market. And uh, if you come into the market at the right time, you definitely would get um, um, the appropriate um, price appreciation. And the logic for for commodity, particularly agri commodity, is um, is such that at the beginning of harvest season, prices are usually the lowest, and as you move away, prices would usually move in one direction, which is upward. So as you move away from uh, harvest period, prices begin to go up. Somewhere between um, harvest and the next planting season, prices will kind of stabilize. So it's all about um, price movements, and you know when to come in um, to take position. Um, what's the traded volume on this on the exchange? Um, Kule did mention in his presentation that um, we've done over 135,000 metric tons in terms of traded volume of commodities. And it's, it's constantly growing. And again, this is one of the reasons we are also um, um, more aggressively um, bringing in capital market operators to um, help depend the market. And this is one of the reasons why we are having this webinar to grow the market, to increase the volume and the activities on that market. Um, the structure to do that is already in place. The back end integration is available. The technology to trade it is available. It's now for the capital market operators to come on board and begin to trade actively. Do you, how do you overcome issue of insecurity during aggregation? Do you play safe by avoiding? Currently, the states we operate in are, are not um, hot spots in the nation. Um, and we actually also have insurance across all our operations that we do. 
So we are fully covered, and um, I guess I answered the question. So whoever asked the question, if, it's, if I didn't answer your question properly, please, you can just let me know and then I can take it again. So we, uh, we, we've, we've worked in states in which um, there, has never, there has not been issue of insecurity, and then we have insurance cover on all our um, field operations. How do you, you in FS ensure reliability of data? So um, I, I know most of people on this call are familiar with the Nigerian Stock Exchange trading system. So the way we have um, the XGen trading system on the exchange, we also have our own um, trade matching engine with where the data, the market discovery data happen. And uh, these are also, um, they are also, as they are also set up to meet standards as applicable to any exchange um, available in the world. So our, our data are quite reliable. They are, they are um, market driven. There is no manipulation of data. So again, um, let's see. Any other question? Okay, I have new, new questions. I need to go back. What have we returned? That has been answered. Hi, Association. Hi, yeah. Okay, so uh, there's a question. Um, yeah, there's a question about. Um, I have two questions. One is, what is the level of risk involved in this investor investment for an investor? And number two is specified duration for the investor. So, um, like every investment, there's a risk level. There's a risk involved in it. So for this trader, now uh, the risk involved will be the price. So that's the risk that the price will move once we come into the into the market. So, um, so it will be on the investor to be able to leave at any time. So whenever he feels it's economical for him to leave, that's the exit period. So there's no specified, nobody's saying this is when you should leave. So it's whenever you feel it's economical in terms of maybe what you appreciated in terms of capital. So that's when you can leave. So I hope that covers it. Sorry, I'm just checking for other questions. No, no, that's fine. All right. Okay, so someone asked a question that if you have um, 10 million naira, it's easy for you to go through your broker and um, invest and buy either your stock or you buy your fund. Uh, how does such an investor with same 10 million invest in the commodities market? Again, the starting point for you as an investor is to download the Comex app and um, I register as an investor fund your account and then um the way you have your um stock listed on the equity you also have the commodities um with their um with their codes listed on the app you will see the prices it's once the market is open you will see live prices you will see the bid and offer you see who is offering um for sale with you and then at what price are they offering uh, you can click on it and then make your investment. Um, for so, those that are joined that probably are going to use the app for the first time, the app has a demo account that you can play around with to see um, how the workings of, the, of, of trading on, on COMEX. And then you can then take that experience to invest. And if um, you currently have a stockbroker, you can encourage them to come and register as um, a member of, of um, FX so that you can begin to route your trades through them as well. So um, Peter Ado Barman, I hope that answers your question. So, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. okay. All right, so one other thing I want to add to the price risk um, discussion is that, so we, one thing we said is the platform is supposed to be all inclusive. So what we're also doing is to ensure, encourage education for investors. So we we'll also put, provide updates on the capital, on the markets, on the commodities markets every now and then, just so the investor can see price movements and how to encourage, just so they can um, encourage them when to leave the market and when to buy more. So it's also an educative um, platform as well. So there's a question, can the impute note be traded and where? For now, the impute note is an L to maturity instrument. 
um, although, um, but we are working on something towards the next, towards next season, next planting season to ensure that the input nodes becomes tradable. And um, the potential places where this probably might be traded would be on our exchange as well as uh, potentially on FNBQ. So, Mr. Patrick, I don't know if that answers your question. Um, Mr. Ali says, said that uh, Commodity Brokers Association will be ready to partner to deep in the market. Thank you very much. I think um, for CBAN, um, we're happy, I, I'm happy to announce to you that we have an MOU with them. So we, we are going to closely work with you to ensure that we deep in the com commodities market. And thank you for, for your cooperation so far. Um, how can investors convert their investments into cash settlement? So when you sell on the exchange, um, the way we have um, our settlement on, on NSE as C plus two, I guess, I hope I'm not wrong with the exchange. Which, so we have our, our settlement period is T plus one. Um, would you, Nancy, please correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're right. Correct. Okay. So we have a settlement period of T plus one. So when you sell down on your portfolio, you get your cash settlement in your wallet, and then you can then cash out from them. How do I know which community to invest? So we've made the community. Okay, how do I know which commodity to invest? Um, Kule mentioned that uh, beyond us just providing the app, we also provide market info. And then we talk, we basically review the markets, what commodities, what the commodities are doing. And um, from there, the client, the investor can take an idea of what to invest. Okay. How liquid is the market? Well, for every trade that you put up on the exchange, there's a match for it at the moment. So um, we have the liquidity of the markets, we are building it, but I can say that whatever trade you put up now, you would have a match for it. Can the input not be traded? Okay, someone already, you already answered that question. Um, sorry, any other question? Do you see a future measure of stock and commodities market in terms of trading and settlement platform? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> that's an interesting question. And um, honestly, maybe, maybe not. I really don't know. And uh, I don't want us to dwell too much on that because that's not the subject of discussion. But maybe, maybe not. We will all have to wait and see how things unfold. Um, particularly because one, the commodities market is, is, a, is, a, is a gray area in which we are building um, the framework and the, the um, structure for. So um, we all have to wait for that future and see. How can one become an, an FX member? If you want to become a, an FX member, I assume you're asking this question to become a broker or a, a broker dealer or a promoter. You can, once you download the app, and you, if you want to be a broker, there's a link for you to you click on it, you register, you provide your KYC, and um, then you become a broker yeah, on, on the, you become a member of the exchange. If you want to be an investor, then you sign up as an investor. How are you guys looking to, for, in, oh, sorry, please, the question. I, how can, oh no, that's answered already. Are you guys looking to partner with other players to have a We are constantly um, doing collaboration and um, across different stakeholders, both within and outside of Nigeria. Earlier on in the year, we signed an MOU with the Dubai Gold Commodity Exchange. Um, so to make gold trading available in Nigeria. So Collaboration for us is at the core of our strategy, and we are constantly looking for partners, key, key and strategic partners um, to drive um, this solution across, not just um, Nigeria, but across the Pan-African.
for individual investors, how are the KYC requirements? So um, your KYC requirements, uh, what are the KYC? Once, when you go there, they have what is required for you to open a bank account, um, your name, uh, your means of ID, BBN, um, address, evidence of utility bill. Very basic um, KYC, just as you would when opening any financial account. Can we see price trend for commodities you currently have on board? Sure. If you go, uh, so it depends on what you're looking at. Sorry. Um, can you, I'm trying to answer the question on the price trends. Yes, we, we, we have um, historical price prices that uh, we can share with you um, if, you require, if, you, if you need that. Any other question? I think I've taken most of the questions. Wow, it's already, it's already one hour and it feels like just 20 minutes. You guys have been a fantastic audience. Okay, any other question? Hello, Funta. I think we have one last one. It said, okay, how do you in FX ensure reliability of data in the market, on the market? So uh, mainly, our, we have a data management structure which conforms to global standard of integrity. So, yeah. Okay, so then I, 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 to also answer the um, price, price, um, prices of commodities, we have an annual commodity outlook that um, we can share with you. We also have um, monthly and weekly prices data that we also release to the public as well. And if you are a member of the exchange, um, depending on what other information you require, we can also share um, those with you. Any other question? Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. And um, we would share, uh, beyond this webinar, we would be asked of other webinars that we would uh, love you to be a part of. And we would share information around this as, as we go along. Um, the slide for this webinar would also be shared. And um, again, thank you very much and have a wonderful evening, everyone. Bye. Thank you, bye. Thanks for coming. And please keep safe, everyone. <laughs>